2011, Facebook is everywhere. On laptops at work, on phones at dinner, on every screen you glance at. The company is adding features faster than anyone else on the internet. But inside the code, something fragile is forming. A small change here can ripple there. A small change to the like button could make the chat window stop loading. A small fix to the notification could freeze the feed. Developers hesitate to push code because even tiny changes could make the system behave unpredictably. The question hanging over late night pushes is simple and scary. How do you move fast when every movement shakes the whole machine? The pressure point is ads. It's Facebook's revenue engine, constantly evolving, more targeting, new formats, hundreds of little controls that must work together. With each experiment, the front end grows more complex. Every new checkbox, every new dialogue, adds another thread to a tapestry that's already tight. Teams realize they are spending as much time avoiding breakage as building features. Shipping slows. The risk of fixed one thing, break three, becomes the routine. Inside the store, an engineer named Jordan Walk is exploring a different approach. Years earlier, Facebook's PHP stack had adopted XHP which encouraged building user interfaces out of components, small pieces that can be composed like building blocks instead of one log template. That way of thinking sticks. At 2011, Walk has a JavaScript prototype internally nicknamed Vax.js. Rather than manually updating the page step by step, the prototype lets engineers describe what the interface should look like, given state, and then efficiently figures out how to update the screen. It quietly ships to a small part of Facebook's interface. Nothing flashy. Just a proof that the idea can survive contact with real users. The pain doesn't stop. As ads grow, so do the stakes. Meanwhile, Facebook acquires Instagram in 2012. New teammates bring fresh expectations and interest in any tool that can tame complexity. For Facebook's internal library to help other teams, it has to be decoupled from private infrastructure and documented so that outsiders can actually use it. Engineers, including Pete Hunt, push on the hard edges, make the library production ready, clear up the abstractions and get it into a shape that can be shared. September 2012, at TechCrunch Disrupt, Mark Zuckerberg admitted Facebook's biggest mistake, relying too much on HTML5 for mobile. The apps felt slow and clunky and users noticed. For a company built on speed, this was dangerous. Facebook now had no choice. Mobile performance had to improve fast. Here's the idea that changes everything. Instead of treating the page like a single fragile piece of glass, split everything into components, independent, reusable pieces. Each piece declares how it should look for a given state. When state changes, you don't manually poke the DOM in a dozen places. You re-describe the end state and the library computes the smallest update to make it less guessing, fewer surprises. May 2013, Facebook takes a risk. The first reactions aren't great. Its style called JSX looks odd and many developers don't like the idea of mixing code and design together. Facebook could have stopped there, but instead they explained it with real examples fast-changing forms, lists that update on the fly, live feedback boxes. Their message was clear. The real problem isn't how the code looks. It's when the screen and the data fall out of sync. And if you could solve this problem, building user interfaces becomes much simpler and easier. Bit by bit, the message gets sharper. Engineers like Pete Hunt start talking about rethinking best practices. They aren't saying that the act is a new shiny thing. They are saying it's useful when your app changes all the time. Outside Facebook, other developer groups begin testing it too. For example, the Closure Script community builds a library OM built on the concept that were used in React. Their articles and examples help the developers see the benefits of React. Fewer glitches when screens refresh. Easier way to think about how the app should look. And simple reasoning about what changes when you update something. By 2014, things begin to change. Other companies run into the same headaches Facebook had. Apps moving fast with complicated screens that kept breaking. More teams start picking up React's component model. At first, people thought, this is unusual. But now the view is, 
this is reliable enough for big serious apps react is no longer just a patch for facebook it's turning into a common solution for a problem everyone is feeling but one problem was still left mobile the warning came in 2012 but the real answer came in 2015 at react js conf in january facebook announced react native bringing the same component ideas to mobile apps in march the ios version was released to the public by september android joined in the point wasn't right one app and run it everywhere it was learn one way of thinking and use it across platforms developers could now use the same mental model for both web and mobile while still getting apps that felt truly native the method that fixed facebook's web chaos was now fixing its mobile chaos too by this point the results are easy to see developers start thinking of the screen as something that simply shows the current state of the app different parts of the app like chat news feed or notifications became separate pieces that different teams can own without stepping on each other's toes features ship faster because changes are less scary and since react is open source the wider community builds extra tools guides and testing methods around it the ecosystem builds naturally not because of the hype around it but because so many people are facing the same problem too many moving parts not enough stability let's rewind the key moments everyone agrees on 2011 facebook's engineers feel the strain of fragile fast changing screens jordan walks prototype called faxjs shows a new way to render 2012 facebook buys instagram at the same time zuckerberg admits on stage that betting too much on html5 for mobile was a mistake 2013 in may at js conf us facebook releases react to the public developers are skeptical at first but the focus stays on making updates predictable 2014 adoption spreads more teams see react as stable enough for large apps 2015 react native is unveiled in january by march ios is open sourced and in september android joins in it was a simple plain idea when something changed Only that part of the screen connected with that part should change. Simple, reliable, and safe. So, how did this actually save Facebook from collapsing under its own weight? Picture the ads dashboard, full of switches, previews, and settings. In the old setup, every interaction had to be wired by hand. Check a box here, and three other parts of the page might need to change. Pick an option in a dropdown, and suddenly, other sections have to update too. it worked until it did it the chain of connections got too messy to keep track of react replaced the chaos with a simple rule describe what the screen should look like for the current data and let react handle the rest instead of chasing down side effects the developers could trust react to only change what was needed and that meant fewer surprises cleaner boundaries and far better odds that a late night change won't crash the site the next morning there's also a social truth here Big front ends aren't just code; they are about people. When hundreds of engineers work in the same space, the safest tools are the ones that make other people's code more predictable to you. Components help by isolating responsibilities. A team can own the feed story renderer without knowing the internals of the composer, and vice versa. That separation lowers coordination costs and speeds up iteration. The model also invites testing at the component level. Given these inputs. Does the output look right? If yes, ship it. If no, you know exactly where to look. Skepticism didn't disappear right away. Early debates circled around questions like, is JSX too messy? Do we really need this virtual DOM trick? Can React's approach even work with the way browsers normally run? But in the end, real world use settled the debate. Developers started to feel the difference themselves. Lists that refreshed correctly, forms that stayed in sync and pages that behave consistently instead of breaking in unexpected ways once people experienced that reliability react's approach stopped being just a theory it became second nature by the time react native was running well on ios and android one bigger lesson stood out having a shared way of thinking it reduces risk when web and mobile teams think about the data and the screens in the same way the platforms still have differences But instead of juggling two completely separate playbooks, teams could now follow one shared strategy: move fast and break things. That worked until that thing was 
the UI itself. You can't move faster if every update you make breaks things in the parts of code you never touched. The answer was to change how updates happen one component at a time, one state change at a time, always with the smallest update needed. That's what React gave Facebook, a way to keep features growing without growing the fear of breaking everything. Once the act became open sourced, other companies began using it for their own web and mobile apps. The developer community added more features around it. Things like routers, state managers, testing tools, and browser dev tools. Over time, best practices frame, keep components clean, manage side effects carefully, and keep data flowing in predictable ways. The tools kept evolving, but the core promise stayed the same. Describe how the screen should look for the current date and react will make it match. So the real story isn't just how React saved Facebook, it is how React affected the day-to-day -day lives of every developer. Before React, building complex things meant juggling fragile connections and hoping nothing broke. After React, developers could think in components, test parts in isolation, and sleep easier after a late-night deploy. The real win wasn't just for Facebook, it was for anyone writing code at scale. So what Facebook did on the front end mirrors what Netflix did on the back end a few years ago. And there's a story on that. So be sure to check out that video on our channel. And let us know in the comments below what is your experience of using React and what could React have done better. And we'll see you in the next one very soon.